Yeah, but it's not doing shit, man. It's just making sparks, cuz. It won't go that way. It won't go that way. It won't go that way. Yeah, we'll try and release it. Big man, it's not going to go that way, cuz. You have to go with the grain. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Sunday Sessions with me and my main man, Robert. Robert today is on the hairdryer duty because we're making fried rice, right? And in order to make fried rice, you need a wok burner. And we're kind of like making a wok burner using a joy stove, a wok and? A hairdryer. A hairdryer, airflow, keeps the heat up. Now, this is just fried rice, yeah? It's just fried rice. Just fried rice. It's the way that I eat fried rice. It's the way I make fried rice at home. I've eaten a lot of fried rice in my life and it was something that I thought I'd like to make and slowly and progressively I've got to a point where I think my fried rice is all right. So, first things first, traditionally fried rice, you'd crack an egg and then fry everything into your egg, right? I don't do that. I make an omelette, cut the egg up and then fold it through my rice. So, we're going to start off with an omelette. Turn this on. Just going to make a little four egg omelette. Just going to beat my eggs gently. I don't want it to be like one fluid, consistent colour. Look, you see how it's got like bits of darker orange, a bit of lighter orange, there's still white bits. That's how far I'm taking my egg, right? When you crack an egg into fried rice, everything tastes eggy. And if you're not using like a high quality egg or like a cheaper egg, I kind of feel like it just ruins everything. Every time, every time I made a fried rice and I've cracked an egg into it at the end, I'm always like, fuck's sake, this isn't what I wanted. So this is my way around it. Shown to me by Millie Taylor, shout out Mills. Um, so, touch of oil into our pan. Just a little smidge. I'm using a nice non-stick pan, so our eggs shouldn't stick. Um, famous last words, it probably will. Pan's warm-ish. Gonna go in with our eggs. Now, we want the first layer to solidify. I'm gonna push the edges into the middle and then move the wet egg down into that patch. Push the egg into the middle and move down, yeah? So we're making like an egg blanket. Every time it sets and solidifies on the bottom, we're gonna move it again. I've got a little bit of wetness in my egg. I'm just gonna start to fold it. Just bring it back on itself, right? I'm not looking for like the best omelet of the year award. Just wanna make sure that there's no runny bits. Give it one little toss. Ah, oh, crepe Suzette. Um, and just leave that in the pan, let it do its thing. So, I want my egg to cool down so that we can chop it and have like nice chunky bits of egg that can mix through our rice, right? Now, I'm using prawns for my fried rice, but let's talk about what's going in the base. So the base for me is garlic, shallots, prawns, and peas. I like to put peas in mine, yeah? Peas be the balm. Peas be with you. Now, I'm just going to finely chop this shallot. So just a little couple lines down. Right, that's the shallots done, yeah? Then we're going to go with some garlic. I'm just going to chop this garlic. I want it quite small because I want it to hit the pan and become fragrant and cook quite quickly. The, the reason that we're using a hairdryer is so that we can create the heat and the, the wok hay, the, the wok breath to create more flavour, right? And everything needs to cook uniform. So you want it all roughly the same size. Our garlic's done. Cool. So, those are the two things that are going to go into the base of my fried rice, along with some prawns, right? American shrimp, uh, Australian shrimp? Yeah. yeah, shrimp or prawns, right? Um, I'm not going to keep them whole, I'm going to give them a little chop. Again, it's all about things cooking uniform. And you'll see that I, I cook my fried rice differently. I don't 
cook my base, then add my rice and bring it all together because I feel like you jeopardise cooking times and the, the way things cook. So I like to cook my base out, pull it out, then make sure that my wok's hot again, then start to, to cook my rice, then add my base back and then finish it finally. So I like to think, I like to almost look at things with my chef, chef hat on and be like, okay, cool. It, it, cooking's about understanding where you fucked up or what went wrong and I found that over over time that my ingredients in my base had overcooked by the time my um, rice had come up to temperature. Right, so prawns are cut, put those to one side. Now, again, I spoke about things happening quickly and rapid, so I want to make sure that everything that's going into the pan is chopped and ready to go, right? So I'm not putting chilies in my base, but I'm going to toss chilies through when it's coming to an end, right? So the chilies are still fragrant. So I'm just gonna chop these chilies. This is four bird's eye, which are quite hot. Seeds in, not bothering taking the seeds out. The seeds go aromatic when they touch the pan. And then I'm just gonna go in with like three spring onions. This stuff here. Prawns, frozen peas, shallots, garlic, all for base. Chilies, spring onions, we're gonna fold through later. Omelette has come down. It's at a temperature now that we can cut it. Fold the omelette out. And then I'm just gonna like, chop this. And see like the omelette's still like bouncy. And for me, it's like the egg remains as the egg should be, right? Just gonna cube it up. And that's the last thing to go in. The omelette's already cooked, so we don't wanna overcook it. Now, I'm gonna start off by standing up. Go on, stick it on. So, the reason that we're using a hairdryer, a wok, and the joy stove is that we want to keep all the heat in the wok, right? Wok cooking's about intensity and being quick and getting wok breath and almost like charring whilst cooking at the same time to build deep flavors. If you're doing this at home, biggest, biggest ring, wok burner on top, then your wok. Your wok has to be smoking hot in order for it to work. Rob, crank it. So look, kill it. You see how quickly this water is coming to the boil? What we're doing is we're providing the, the fire with air and the air is helping to keep the intense heat up, right? In restaurants and takeaways, they use big gas burners that almost roar like that when they turn them on because it's like compressed fuel that's going straight into a burner. So we're trying to recreate that here. Go again. <laughs> Alright, so look, wok's, wok's hot. Stop, Rob. Now, what we're going to do... Right, we're going to work fast here, Rob, yeah? Hit me. Now... We're going to start off by adding... Thank you, Rob. All right, kill it. This is seasoning our wok, right? So we've got this oil hot. I'm gonna run it all the way around the wok and then fuck it off. Now, uh, hit it again, Rob. Little splash of oil. Prawns. <laughs> Sorry. Prawns. So lots.
So look, we're creating this this smoke here. We need it to be that hot in order to create wok hay, right? Which is the flavor from how hot the pan is to things almost charring. So if you can see how quickly those shallots have become translucent, our prawns are almost there. Now, we're gonna add the garlic next because garlic cooks quicker. Little touch of oil, Rob hit me. Garlic, in. Keep it moving, yeah? Smells nice, isn't it? Right, at this point, I'm gonna go pinch of white pepper, a tablespoon of MSG, peas. All right, kill it, Rob. Pan's hot. Right, we're gonna pull this out. And set it to one side, yeah? That's our base done. Now, again, the same way we seasoned our wok beforehand, we're gonna do that every time, right? So, Rob, crank it. We're gonna do the oil thing again. This is just creating a barrier between the wok and the food, right? Go inside. Let the oil come up to heat. And here I have two cups of cooked uh, Japanese rice. I eat Japanese rice at home. This is two cups of cooked Japanese rice, yeah? Cold, cooked yesterday. Right, so we want to break the rice up so that each grain is individual, right? Rob, hit me. Right. Rice is up to temperature. In with a filling, yeah? Go on, Rob. Just looking for everything to come together, but the rice to be almost individual grains, right? You can see that our pan's hot. Getting loads of steam come off of it. Almost ready to finish. Now, I'm gonna go in with our egg. Our spring onions and chili. Chili's a fire, isn't it? Gonna have a little taste. Yeah, it's nice, it's smoky. It's got a good spice to it. I'm gonna go a little touch of salt a little bit more MSG. Rock it. Kill it. Now, I 
want to season with soy sauce, right? I'm just going to give it a good splash, a couple tablespoons. Hit it, Rob. Everything's come up to the same temperature. The soy sauce is reduced. It's almost starting to catch on the bottom, right? Everything's warmed through. The grains of rice are individual. The prawns cooked. It's picked up all the flavors. Now, I like to serve mine in a formed bowl, yeah? So I take a little bowl. Just like that. Dun 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 Fire rice. Those bits of char are like the caramelization, the sugars from the shallot. It's the soy sauce that's caught to the bottom of the wok that we've tossed through and tossed through and tossed through. And that's what you need in order to create that like big, bold flavor along with the MSG. I feel like MSG and wok smoke go hand in hand and it intensifies and makes everything great. I'm gonna show you how I like to finish my fried rice at home, right? So I don't bother chopping the coriander. I just go like whole coriander on top. Just like this, I'm a fiend for coriander. And then I feel like a little squash of lime goes a long way. That acidity cuts through all the richness and the deep flavors. And then optional is some chili oil. Robert, chili oil? Mm. Yeah, cool. And the chili oil just breaks the color, bleeds through. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I make... Oh, I didn't go on my shorts. That's how I make fried rice. <laughs> and Robert on the blow on the blowjob. <laughs> blowjob Rob. <laughs> oh, what, which Rob? Yeah, Rob the blowjob, yeah, Rob. Oh, no, blowjob blow Rob. <laughs> Man's got curly hair now, cuz. Had to study him. Yeah. No, this is straight out of the shower. Yo, shout out Tresemme for the assistance. Trust me, big up Tresemme. It's our secret, Tresemme. Tresemme. Also sounds like Trey and Semi, isn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. Trey yeah, Trey Semi. If me and Trey got married, that'd be our name. <laughs> Large up Trey. Um, yeah, so let's eat the proofs in the pudding. That's the spoon that fell on the floor. Here. Yeah. Cheers. You hear it, look. You hear that? Moist. Nice, nice. So it's like, nice, so I, I might have gone a little heavy on the soy sauce. It's a touch salty. But like the prawns have got a good chew. The eggs like kept this integrity in its shape. Um, no. Nah. The little cheeky lime juice on top gives it an acidity that runs all the way through. And then like powerful MSG, secret chilies, a couple spring onions. For me, this is like, I always deliberately make too much rice. Uh, also, while we're here, if you don't know how to make rice, go check the 7up Pusan video recipe. That's the exact recipe that I did for this. Cooked it, left it in the fridge overnight. Bob's your uncle. Cheers. I tried to go traditional with it. Not the recipe as such, but the way it was cooked. So I wanted to mimic having a wok burner at home. I'd love to have a wok burner. And 
obviously, if you don't have a joist or a hairdryer and a friend that's willing to do it in, a, in return for a bowl of fried rice, um, <laughs> do it on your stove, but crank the heat up the, ho the whole time it has to be hot. Even if you're waiting in between stages, so when your, your prawns come out, wait, let the pan come up. Your rice goes in, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but it has to start to steam and like be hot before other bits goes in. Also, never ever make fried rice with hot rice. It has to be cold. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'm Big Hass. This is Blowjob Rob. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday Sessions. No one's going to see you in the street and call you Blowjob Rob. <laughs> You know it'll happen? <laughs> no, it won't. It'll fucking happen.